welcome to Splatterlot. <laughs> Today we invite 12 brave-hearted young warriors to go head to head with the defiant defenders as they strive to capture the highly coveted crown of Splatterlot. <laughs> Will the defenders keep the castle safe from the attackers? Yes! Preserve their majestic kingdom and reign victorious? <laughs> who will tumble? Who will tilt? Who will teaser? And who will go splash? Hello, we're Dick and Dom. Welcome to Splatterlot. And what is Splatterlot? I mean, let, let's pretend you've never met before. Explain Splatterlot to me in under 30 seconds. OK. Good day to you, sir. Why? You seem to be the kind of chap who's itching to know more about Splatterlot. Yes, tell me more. Twelve young attackers do battle over three rounds for the right to claim the Splatterlot crown. Will it be messy? Yes. Will it be splatty? Yes. Will you be able to explain the aforementioned three rounds in more detail? Yes. Round one will challenge the attackers to cross the Splatterlot moat as quickly as possible. Yes. The fastest six will then attempt to escape the stockade. Yes. And the four who do so will compete in the final for that all important important crown. <laughs> and that, sir, is splat a lot in 30 seconds. Good day. Good day. <laughs> OK, here's round one in slightly less theatrical detail. The moat challenge begins with the baffling barrels, guaranteed to start the day with the splats. It's then up the slippery slope, across the terrifying rolling mace, and down the appropriately named impossible incline. After that, it's the small matter of making it over the beastly battle axes. Shoppers! The rope bridge of disaster is next, which is never easy. And that leads to the perilous pole vault, as if pole vaulting weren't perilous enough. <laughs> so, baffling, terrifying, impossible, beastly, disastrous and perilous. Could be describing this lot. Yes, it's the defenders, the scariest obstacles of all. In round one, Scab rules! Scab is our resident barbarian. Thorn! He's quite a prickly character. One flap. And you're on your back. And Kookaburra makes three. Defense. 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 Ah. Hey, it's like they're in a barbarian shop quartet. <laughs> you know, like barbershop quartet. Scabs are barbarian. So, here's round one. So, the course is ready and the defenders are in position. That's it. Protect the crown, Thorn. First off is Madison. First pop in my chance, baby. <laughs> Well, Madison's battle cry is full of energy. We'll let you know when we've worked out what she said. Tracy Beaker! Oh, and it's the first splat of the day. Yes, that left foot just giving way, and down goes Madison. But she's back up and tackling the slippery slope. Oh, hop up! Slipping and screaming. Are you OK? And another slip screen combo. What's going on? The defender's still waiting for Madison to get up that slope. Are you all right? How are you doing there, darling? Bad! Oh! Who's there? Forgetting to defend. Oh, Sorry, mate, it's my job. Now Madison needs to focus on the mace. Oh, maybe too focused, Sarah Jane. Yes! The mace talks up its first splat, it won't be the last. Mm. Now, how will Madison do on the incline? Oh, oh well, it's a good save, but now she's stuck. What next? Zamo! More accurate splatting from the defenders that led to that fall. Mm. Doesn't get any easier. The battle axes are next. She's onto the first, still under fire. She's onto the second. Bodger and Badger! So close! And our slow-mo camera picks up exactly what's going through Madison's mind. Uh-oh, she's thinking. Here comes a splat and a big one at that. She's onto the bridge, protected by Thorn and his water cannon. Give me more! Give me more! Oh, <laughs> this one likes it! Excellent. Come on, Maddie. <laughs> Whoa. She's given as good as she gets. Am I high? Am I low? Oh, she wasn't fast, but she was a true competitor. Well done, Maddie. Next up is Sydney. Let's do this thing! Medieval start! OK, Sydney, we will. Oh, and that's a medieval start. Not just that, but it's the fastest flat we've ever had. Well done, Sydney! She now makes her way up the slope. Try and aim for Sydney. Scab telling Kuko fair. Meanwhile, Sydney crossing the mace and oh, nearly! And uh, mace is as good as our mile. Well, here she is now on the pole vault. To make it into the castle, Sid, you get a haircut like Thorn over there. Hmm, is that supposed to be an incentive? <laughs> oh, Barbara! Everyone should have a haircut like this. Well, Splatlot is a hair-raising experience, and Sydney should make the cut with that time. I have two chinchas! Scab one! Attack and none! Ah! Oh, Scab mean as ever. Ooh. Oh, hang on, I've got an idea. Once upon a time, there was a lonely prince who'd been turned into a barrel. It's usually a frog. Shut up! 
One day, Princess Chanel gave the lonely barrel a kiss. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> That's beautiful. Ah! Ah! Okay, back to the action. Chanel is on the slope. She's under attack, but sticks her tongue out in defiance, pimply. Whoa! She's onto the mace. Why I bite a groove! Three attackers have tried, but the mace is being mean today. The naughty mace, smacky butty. She finishes in 7:43. Will that be good enough? Here's Craig. I like three pins, ponies. How you doing, there, Craig? How you doing, champ? You right, mate? Two company loving Craig seem to be getting along. He approaches the incline and oh, dives into the moat. And the scores for that dive are now in. How do you like that? Back to the action, and Craig is sprinting over the rope bridge. Just the pole vault to go. And, yes! oh no, he's going down. Basement floor, men's toiletries, and deep, dirty moats. How do you like that? I think he'll like that a lot, because that's a very fast time from Craig. Here's Rachel. Let's ride unicorns to Alaska. Rachel, where are you? How you doing there, sweetie? Will Rachel make it over the maze? She's flying, flying, flying! Oh. Yes, the mace keeps his record intact, and Rachel joins the others in the moat. Rachel, you've wet me feathers. Well, Rachel has wet Kook's feathers and ruffled them by the looks of things. Game on. Rachel steps onto the rope bridge of disaster. And oh, no, look, disaster! She's completely entangled. How will she get out of that? Oh, right, like that. And that's a pretty good time of 5.57. Here's Graham. Fist pop! Ah, don't look up, Graham. Oh, that's quite a way to start your day. Oh, and Graham is now down! It's our friend again, barrel number two. It's confusing to let anyone pass. The defenders are doing their best to slow Graham down too, but he's made it to the mace. Woking! Oh, I'm good, but Graham is better. He's our first attacker to make it over the mace today. Surely that's too fast down the incline. Oh, no! I think you two need to be a bit more serious. Yeah, now I can't hear you because of the whole mohawk thing. Graham almost across the battle axes. But no, he's lost his footing and oh, Mr. Bronson! But it doesn't matter, Graham's over in a very fast time and he's sure to be through. And the defenders need to take time out. Well, they can do just that because we're halfway through round one. Craig is leading with two minutes 11 and with six more attackers to come, Madison is in danger with nine minutes 36. Now, the defenders lost focus in that first half, so will they get it together and come out strong in the second? Remember, only the six fastest go through, so with six more to come, it's still anybody's game, eh, Kook? Oh, yes! Mmm, there's quite a few talking points in that first half. Yeah. We had Chanel, the barrel-kissing princess. Yeah, I Craig, the pink pony-loving thoroughbred, who's fastest so far. Rachel, who overcame disaster at the rope bridge. Yeah, and Graham and Sydney, who had to witness all that nonsense between Thorn and Kookaburra. I mean, don't the defenders realise that arguing amongst themselves is pointless? Oh, yes, it's the ugly side of splat <sighs> that no-one likes to see. Uh. Want to see more? Yes, please. Mm. Look! I'm doing a better job than you two could have done. <laughs> Oh, dear, they're still at it. So far, Craig is fastest with 2 minutes 11, and Madison has that time to beat of 9 minutes 36. Here's Mariana. Let's hear it for the Queen What? And we find Mariana already under siege at the slippery slope. And that was a quadruple splat attack from Kookaburra there. It looks like he's really fired up on this round. Yeah, you can. And Kookaburra isn't letting up. Look at the paintball debris flying around Mariana. And she's in the moat. Can she recover? Yes, yeah, she can. This is courageous stuff. Be brave! How much braver can she be? Oh, Barnsley! Oh, They're splatting her yes. from every angle. Now the battle axes are joining in. And Mariana braves another big splash. But she's made it and just squeezes through into sixth place. Well done, Mariana. Here's Megan. Woo, 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 woo! Rock on! Don't splat! Ah! Megan, is it cold in the water? Uh oh, Coop's trying something clever. Try and stay out of the water, yeah? He tells her to stay out of the water, and now all Megan can do is think about going in, and she does! Plan worked perfectly. Yes, but maybe it was just the rolling mace continuing its impressive record of splatting attackers. Let's go, Thorny, let's go! This will be interesting. Is that nice and cold for you? And it seems the defenders have got it together. Nice teamwork! Yeah! Well, let's see how long it lasts. Meanwhile, Megan is back in the moat. The pole vault has actually got a better splat record than the mace today. But she makes it, and that time knocks out Mariana. Let's blow this popsicle stand. Scab gives Stephen a warm welcome, and off he goes. Look at that, that's one of the best barrel runs today. He's so fast that Scab's now out of position. Steve-O, how you doing, mate? 
Open me out for me. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, looks like Wait. Kook's. Blanchuka's jump! Can Stephen take advantage of this? He's climbing! Go! Oh! There's a monkey in the castle. And Stephen was going ape on that maze. It was like the little monkey had a banana he just couldn't quite get to. Great effort, great splat. What are you waiting for, Thorn? Oh, no, not again. I've got to pass all this. Thorn, try to be useful. Meanwhile, he's just ignoring them and makes it over the bridge. Now, come on, Stephen. Can you do this? Good start. Poodle! That's what I was waiting for. Yeah! Touche! Well, they're still arguing. But Stephen won't mind. He is over in the second fastest time of the day. 2.45. A great round. Limp and floppy celebrations. I want to own this castle! Hmm. I didn't know it was for sale. Well, the only way Patrick's going to own this castle is if he becomes king. Oh, hang on. That's the point of the show, isn't it? And uh, looking at his work on the mace there, that might just happen. He's pretty tidy on the incline, too. Oh. Backshaw! That was live and deadly! One for the team! But has it slowed Patrick down? No, not at all. He's steadily making his way over the axes. And yes, he's made it! Can Thorn do anything to stop him? Well, so far, so good. He's almost over. I think you're tough, don't you? Now, someone just needs to crack that pole vault. Hacker and dodge! That's it. I've had enough to hear with that pole. Calm down. You're worse than the defenders. No need for Pat to calm down, though. He's in the lead. I'm a squealer! Merry go, meet Coop. Let's go, Merico. Let's go. Will Kookaburra's cheerleading help? Slammer! Oh, that was quite a splat. And so is that. And that. And that. 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 Sorry about that. Mariko is now at the rope bridge and doing well. Ah, straight past Thorn, as usual. Stop distracting me! And the defenders won't let it lie! The reign of Thorn! A thorny reign indeed, which sends Mariko into the dirge. <laughs> They'll come back to Mariko, but here's the final attack at Christopher. Scab's caught out again, but this guy is fast. He's over the barrels and almost misses out on the slope completely! Chris, it's not that we don't like you, we just can't let you in, mate. Oh, it's gone through. That's a direct splat from Coop, but Chris doesn't care. He's now up on the slope and onto the mace. He's fast! He suddenly is. He's over the mace. He's over the incline. <laughs> OK, OK, look, the first thing to say is that Chris is fine. The second thing to say is... <laughs> Forget splat of the day. That is officially the splat of the year! Here it is again. Chris runs over the mace and down the incline. But he overshoots and thwacks straight into the battle axes. It's just a splatterific from this angle. He really puts himself on the line there. But he's OK. It's all down to the clever padding around this course. But as you can see, he's absolutely fine. And with that time of two minutes, he's bound to make it into the next round. So that splat was definitely worth it. He's one happy boy -o. He's not. So Patrick, Christopher, Craig, Stephen, Graham and Megan are through to the stockade. I'm exhausted and we've only had one round. Here's a peek at what's next. Yes, the excitement continues in the stockade because that foam-filled arena is always one giant splat fest. So we now have our six fastest attackers. Patrick's leading and has already claimed he wants to own the castle. But if Christopher hadn't been distracted with his splat of the year, then he might have been fastest. A monkey climbing Stephen and swallow diving Craig were also well under three minutes. Here's the complete lineup going through to round two. Patrick, Christopher, Craig, Stephen, Graham and Megan, who all now face the stockade. <sighs> Remember, the times posted in round one now count for nothing. Everyone's got to start from scratch. Let's take a closer look. The attackers have to escape the stockade. They start by grabbing ladder rungs, then cross the wheel of certain doom to begin building their ladders. Trouble is, not all the rungs fit. They then have to grab one of only four flags before escaping to victory. But slowing them down will be the three new defenders. Kicking off round two is Tartan Terra Ballista. <laughs> Joining her is our very own weapons master, Tinkor. And finally, the mean and magnificent Nitrous. Attackers! Let's see if you have what it takes. To escape the stockade! <laughs> Here's how they line up. Graham's in the orange, Megan's in the pink. Craig's in the light green, Stephen's in the dark green, Patrick's in the blue, Christopher's in the purple. That is, of course, until the foaming begins. And there's Nitrous on the froth brother. Here comes the foam. The wheel spins the attackers so they're nice and dizzy. And the defenders look like they're about to have fun. And they're off! Well, sort of. Some are struggling to get off the wheel. Come on, get off! Chris has already got a rung. Stephen and Graham get to know the annihilating arm a little bit better. Take off! Lovely and 
for Luffy today! Oh, <laughs> thank you, Compare Luffy. that with the arguing we witnessed in round one. Who can Thorn take notes? And Graham slots in his first rung. Thwacker! Steve is once more spluttered by the arm. There's Belisa with a goo grenade, but she misses. And this time the arm sends Craig back down into the foam. And Nitrous is right, that foam is extra fluffy today. Oh, now that is actually Megan, but with all that foam, she looks like Father Christmas. And the wrist looked like Santa Snowman. Oh, we had reindeer. Patrick Dunks, but Christopher's stuck under the arm. Oh, there he goes. Stephen has a go, but no, the arm knocks him back too. Yes, the arms are certainly dishing it out today. How about a little shower, attackers? Come on, I know you're thirsty. Now Belista gets involved, but the annihilating arms don't need her help. Down goes Craig again. Just look at the foam out there. The attackers are seriously getting splatted. Yo -ho, yo -ho. Lovely. Tinkog gives Graham a sliming for his troubles. He needs to. Graham's ladder is almost complete. Tink, tink, tink. Oh, you're thirsty? How about some water? Oh, thank you, lovely Belista, but seriously, no, thank you. You're welcome. And Tinkle's really got it in for Graham today. A bucket of slime this time. Tinkle really seems to be enjoying himself out there in his own twisted way. Nitrous now joins the party with a slime stick and Helen Skelton! That's a double splat. Chris and Steve go flying. Nitrous and the annihilating arm. What a combination. And Megan has avoided most of this splatting and has built her ladder. She's now heading for the flags, but there's a traffic jam up there. Oh, and it's a multi splat. The arm decides it's had enough and sends everyone spinning. And just look at this foam in slow motion. The stockade is on song today. Greg keeps an eye on the arm, but doesn't see Graham. Patrick, who led in round one, is taking his time too. Craig dodges the arm again. Both he and Graham are now going for the flags. Oh, but they get tangled up and down they go. But who's got the flag? Mm, let's have a look. I think it could be Graham. Craig seems to get there first, but did Graham wrestle him off? Very controversial. Well, we're putting it down to an accident, and Graham is allowed to continue. He's up and he's on his way. The other five now have only three flags to fight over. Graham's at the top and he's through! And heroically, Craig has picked himself up and grabbed the second flag. The arm puts up a struggle, but he's free and on his way. The arm now takes out Christopher. What a day he's having. And Megan has the third flag. Only one flag remaining. The defenders need to step up. Tinkle slamming Patrick, but is it all too late? Confirmation that Megan and Craig have both made it. Chris is still finishing his ladder, but Patrick is at the top of the wheel and he has the last flag. And that's it. We have our four finalists. We say goodbye to Stephen and farewell to Chris. Both worthy competitors. Perhaps more worthy than the display from the defenders. Maybe being nice to each other isn't the answer. But don't take anything away from our gallant attackers. In the final will be Patrick, Craig, Graham and Megan. And they will all be competing to capture the highly coveted crown of Splatterlot. Yes, four will compete, but only one will reign victorious and we've left the best challenge till last. Here's a taste of what's coming up. Plenty of drama, plenty of excitement and plenty of splat. It's Splat Time! Why don't we just take a moment to celebrate some classic splats? <laughs> yes! That's why we call it Splat-a-Lot. Right, old boy, any splat starts from the last round to pick up on? Mm. Well, <clears throat> there'll be no love lost between Graham and Craig after that incident with the flag. And what about Patrick? First in round one, then last in round two. Make of that what you will. Well, the other talking point has to be the defenders. They were really argumentative in round one and didn't gel as a team. Then in round two, they were sweet, charming and generally useless. Trouble is, after two bad rounds, they might just get the balance right in the final. So, who will win? Here's the lineup. Patrick, Craig, Graham, and Megan. Four attackers, but they'll be facing six defenders. They are Ballista, Tinkle, Nitrous, Kookaburra, Thorn, and Scab. Very scary. Ah! Ah! And here is the course. The attackers start with a pole drop into the funky foam. Then it's onto the Titanic Teeters. Over the barrier of all barriers, onto the Bouncy Boys. And finally, up the water wall where the crown awaits. Any last thoughts before we get started? Yes! Let's get started. Splat! Splat! Oh. Splat! Oh. Splat! 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 Well, it's a fairly easy chance to remember. Unless you're scab. Splat! Here's the lineup. Graham is in the orange, Megan's in the pink, Patrick's in the dark blue, and Craig's in the light green. And they're off and down into the funky bone. 
But Lisa's there to greet them, but she misses. And so does Scab. Craig's still covered in funky foam, but that won't last long. Al four on the teeters, who'll be first in. Megan's losing her balance, and bungalow! And that sets off a splat reaction. Everyone's being splattered. This isn't preschool. This is splat a lot. Born giving the attackers an education. And Graham learning the hard way on the teachers. Tinkor slimes Megan. She's toppling and down she goes. Tinkor's probably been the best defender today. Ah! I don't think Scab agrees. Ooh, and Graham is still learning the hard way on the teachers. Good stuff, my chaps. <laughs> Thorn is now sliming Patrick. Scab's joining in too. Looks like they're friends again. But Patrick is made of sterner stuff and makes it to the barrier. Nitrous tries to cloud the issue, but he's definitely over. And onto the boys. And that kickstarts the water wall. So can anyone stop Patrick? Craig's now making a move. Patrick once more vaporized. The defender's slowing him down. And Craig leaps. He's now alongside Patrick. Can Megan catch up? No, not yet. Whoever wins the splats have been top quality today. Back to the boys battling out on the boys. The defenders are gathering, so this won't be easy for Patrick or Craig. Wow, Nitrous is creating a sea mist on the moat. And Belisa now joining in with the Splatzooka. Yes, I'm on fire! Coop takes aim with the Splat bow. The defenders are all working well together. All now focusing on these two attackers. Scab showering and Tinkle sliming. It's a Splat bath out there. Tinkle! <laughs> Back to the teachers. Oh, Graham and Megan fall together. Have we just invented a new sport? Synchronized Splatting? I like it! Yeah! So does Scab. Patrick leaps for the platform, but maybe Scab put him off. Yes, just imagine having this in your ear. Ah! Oh, look at this. Can Megan make it over the barrier? No. Patrick is now on the platform, but Craig's clearly a leap away. Patrick heads for the wall, ready to climb. Hello! Craig almost grabs him by the ankles. Graham still on the teeters, and that's another splat. Patrick is now making the final climb. He's nearly there. Surely the defenders can't stop him now. Come on, Patrick! And Patrick's at the top. He's reaching for the crown, and that's it! Patrick is our new king, and he's ecstatic. Just look how close Craig was. Only seconds behind in a truly thrilling final, but there can only be one, and this time it's Patrick. <laughs> oh, no. Tinky can't believe it. Oh, he's collapsed. Tinkor. Oh, no. This looks worrying. Is Tinker OK? Um... Someone, do something! I'm going in! Oh! Oh, oh no, yeah, Tinker is just being a little Tinker. This guy! OK, let's get back to celebrating. Even Craig's joining in with King Patrick. Nice one, fellas! What a great final, huh? Almost too close to call. Yeah, but Patrick made it, and there's a worthy winner. Of course, we did have one other worthy winner today. I think I know what you mean. Yes, we've already named it Splat of the Year. It's Christopher's amazing moment in the moat challenge. Straight into the axe and onto the castle wall and into the moat. But he was perfectly fine and still finished the course in a great time. What a splat. What a tournament. And what a champion. Let's look back at King Patrick's majestic journey to the throne, which started with this little prediction. I'm gonna own this castle! He certainly owned the moat challenge. But we weren't so sure after he finished last in the stockade. But he led from start to finish in the final, and despite the defender's best efforts, he made it to the top and celebrated like a king. That's because he, he is a king. Mm. Over to the flag ceremony. I am the king of the castle! That's all for now. But in the meantime, keep, keep splatting. splatting.